Okay, so if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you're definitely going to have to be able to do a problem like this. And these uh, problems here are not too difficult, but what's going to go on here? Well, it appears that we are trying to add up some fractions, but uh, the deal is this. These are actually not fractions. So you might be confused, and let me go ahead and clear this confusion up right now because this is very important. So here is a number two-sevenths. Now this indeed is a fraction, two sevenths, and when you were studying fractions in elementary school and middle school, you were dealing with things like this. But this type of number in mathematics is also called a rational number. A rational number is a number that can be expressed as a fraction where the numerator and denominator are these nice lovely numbers called integers, so something like this. So this is a fraction, but again it's also a rational number. So what we're dealing with here, anytime you have fractions with some sort of variable in them, like 2 over 7x or x plus 1 over 3, anything like this where you, it appears that you do have a fraction, a numerator and denominator, but you have some sort of variable going on, effectively what we're dealing with is what we call rational expressions. So what we're going to be doing here is adding up these rational expressions. And this is important because if you are looking for help, in this particular topic, or if you're looking in your textbook, you know, like, hey, what chapter or unit are you studying? You want to be uh, referring to uh, rational expressions and rational equations chapter or unit. Okay, if you're looking for fractions, like the chapter on fractions uh, with variables in your algebra book, you're not going to find it because we refer to these things again as rational expressions. And of course, here I have an equation, but I had a, a number here, like let's say six. Now I'm dealing with a, a rational uh, equation. All we want to do right now, though, is add up these rational expressions. And if you know how to do this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm actually going to show you two ways to solve this. And one of these ways is one of the best little shortcuts in algebra and uh, has to do with fractions. It's probably one of my favorite little things in mathematics. So you want to stick around if you don't know what I'm talking about. But anyways, we're going to get to this in just one second. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you the correct answer in a moment. And we're going to get uh, to all of this. But let me first quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love teaching mathematics. And I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in mathematics. What you need is encouragement and great math instruction. Math instruction that you actually understand, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're getting ready for, I'm talking about something like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, uh, GRE, GMAT, maybe a teacher certification exam. Uh, or if you homeschool mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. But um, here's the deal. If you don't have notes, you need something to study from. So, of course, you can use my math notes, but you have to become an awesome note taker in mathematics. There's just no other way to get really, really good at math if you don't take notes. So start taking better notes and you'll see magically everything will start getting better. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer here and then we will talk about two ways to find uh, the correct solution. So uh, 2 over 7x plus x over 5, if we add up these rational expressions, we get this as our answer, 10 plus 7x squared over 35x. Now, if you had 7x squared over here plus 10, it doesn't make a difference in, uh, in terms of order here, but 35x is definitely the denominator. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this correct, I must give you a nice, lovely, happy face in A+, plus, a 100% and a multiple stars so you can have an extra special day and show off your math work to your friends. You say, hey, look, I know how to add rational expressions. Very, very good. So let's kind of go back to this thing here real quick. I was talking about the difference between fractions and rational expressions. This is going to be very, uh, very, very important. So if I wanted to add up the fractions 1 7 plus 3 7 well, how do I do this? Well, hopefully, at this level of math, you're like, 
oh yeah, I'm trying to learn algebra. I definitely know how to deal with fractions. You can add these up because the denominator is the same, right? So this would just literally be seven uh, as a denominator. And then we're going to just simply add the numerator. So we get four over seven. No problem. Okay. So when we are trying to add or subtract fractions, we could do this nice and easily if the denominators are the same. But if the denominators are not the same, well, we got a different situation. So if I'm trying to figure out what two sevenths is, plus let's say one fifth, how do I add up these fractions? Well, the way you add up these fractions is going to be you know, uh, applicable to doing a problem like this. So this is kind of like if you watch more of my other videos or maybe you're new to my YouTube channel here. Uh, and if you are new, thank you, uh, thanks for dropping in. But one of the things I always uh, stress is that when you're learning mathematics, when you're in elementary school, middle school, high school, college, it doesn't make a difference. Learning mathematics is a continuum, okay? You can't forget what you learn. So, you know, working with basic fractions, you know, you're learning this in elementary school, middle school, but in algebra, you know, over here in high school uh, or in college, whatever the case is, you still need to remember how to actually add fractions, okay? If you forgot how to do that, well, you're going to have a tough time doing this problem, but let's go ahead and quickly get into this right now because in order to do this problem, what are you going to need? you're going to need the LCD, the lowest common denominator. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about two ways we can add these rational expressions. So the first way is what I just mentioned. We can find the LCD, the lowest common denominator between these denominators. Okay, so how do you find the LCD? Well, I'm not gonna really kind of get into this because this deserves its own video in and of itself, which I have tons of videos on my YouTube channel. Uh, by the way, if you need help with basic fractions or any of this stuff, I would probably suggest like my pre-algebra course. I have a full chapter on fractions, LCD, and uh, rational expressions as well. But effectively, uh, to find the LCD, of uh, uh, depending on how many denominators you have here, here we have two, we have to look at the prime factors of the numbers or expressions in uh, each of these denominators, and we have to kind of represent them all in one big product. So in other words, the prime factors of seven and X is seven times X. Seven's a prime number, and X is a factor as well. And then here, five is the only prime factor of five. So the LCD, the lowest common denominator, is going to be the product of all the prime factors of all your denominators. So this is, in this case, it's gonna be seven times X times five, which is 35x, okay? And this would be no different if you were trying to figure out this problem, 2 sevenths plus 1 fifth. If I said, hey, what's the uh, LCD? Hopefully you would say 35. In this case, we have an x, so it's gonna be 35x. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take this to the next step. So we're gonna have to rewrite our uh, problem here. We have 2 over 7x plus x over 5. We're gonna have to change these denominators to a 35x. So how do I change a 7x, for example, into a 35? Easy, just multiply uh, that 7x by a 5, and we get a 35x, but if you multiply the denominator by 5, you're gonna have to also multiply, multiply the numerator by 5. So 5 times 2 is 10. So 2 over 7x is equivalent to this new fraction, 10 over 35x. Okay, so these are the same. We just have a different uh, denominator. Okay. Now, you know, the way you kind of, um, convince yourself that these are the same is that if I said, Hey, reduce this fraction 10 over 35 X, you would get back to the original fraction. All right. So let's go ahead and rewrite X over five such that it has a denominator of 35. Well, how do I change a five into a 35 X? Well, just multiply by seven X. So you're going to get a 35 X here. So I multiply the denominator by a seven X, kind of multiply the numerator by seven X. So that's going to be seven X times X or seven X squared. Okay. So now we actually have two denominators that are exactly the same. So we're ready to add this up. So let's go ahead and take this to our last and final uh, step here. So 10 over 35 X plus uh, 7x squared over 35x is going to be 35x, and we're just simply going to add the numerators, 10 plus 7x, and that's it. Now, I will say one last thing here. 
you always want to look for opportunities to kind of simplify this. So if there's kind of a greatest common factor or something you can kind of do to simplify, you want to do that. But in this case, this is all done. All right, so this was uh, the first technique. And you need to know this technique is how to work uh, with finding the uh, lowest common denominator of these rational expressions. And this is a very, very easy problem. Believe me when I tell you, uh, when you're working with rational expressions, uh, it can get much, much more challenging. But, you know, I'm just trying to kind of get you warmed up in this topic. And as promised, I'm going to show you another beautiful way to do this problem. And this is a shortcut, okay, or a hack, a, not a really a trick, but shortcuts. And listen, we all love shortcuts, right? Uh, if we're driving home, you know, we all have our little, you know, <laughs> our Google Maps or our Waze on, or we're looking for like the fastest way to get back home. Uh, so listen, this is effectively going to be a fast way to do this problem. So I'm calling it the bow tie hack. It's uh, one of the most popular things I love to teach. I use it all the time. And effectively, when you want to add or subtract fractions and your brain is really not up to be uh, figuring out the lowest common denominator, like, you know, what, I just don't want to do that. Well, you can always go with this technique here. Now, bow tie, I'm referring to this thing right here. OK, so a bow tie, which I don't wear a bow tie. Some of you might think, you know, maybe he's calling this the bow tie technique because maybe he's one of these kind of math guys that wears a bow tie and has a, a pocket protector with all kinds of pencils and pens and calculators. No, that's not me. Uh, but you know what? I'm not saying they're not cool ties. I just don't wear bow ties. But that's what a bow tie looks like. So I'm kind of going off the shape. OK, so this is the basic shape that we want to keep in mind. And I'm going to show you why here in a second. All right, so here is the bow tie technique uh, in action. Anytime you want to add or subtract fractions without uh, finding the LCD, all you're going to do is just follow this specific pattern, okay? And it's a uh, very specific order. And then we're going to, let's go ahead and actually start now. So you're going to start from this bottom right number over here. So you have two fractions. You're going to start with the denominator to the far bottom right, right here. So you're going to go 5 times 2. 5 times 2 is what? It's 10. Okay, so there you go. That's step 1. Now, because we're adding, this is going to be an addition problem. Okay, so we're going to put a plus. And then step 2 is you're going to go to the bottom left denominator. So in this case, it's 7x. And you're going to multiply across this way. Okay, so 7x times x is, of course, 7x squared. And then to find the denominator, you're simply going to multiply across. So 7x times 5 is 35x, and we are done. Take a look at that. I literally just went this times this times this and just wrote it right there. And this is, in fact, the same as this answer. Look at that, 10 plus 7x squared over 35x. And over here, we have 10 plus 7x over 35x. And some of you might be like, just in shock. You might be like, like, wow, why did I know this earlier? It would have saved me so much work. Well, listen, you need to know this technique, but you also need to know how to work with the lowest common denominator. The one thing uh, that the bow tie technique doesn't guarantee um, all the time is that your denominator may or may not be the lowest common denominator. So you always um, need to... Um, you know, check to simplify your final answer. But that's kind of the only drawback. And this is super, super handy in algebra. It's an absolutely must know. But anyways, uh, whether you use the bow tie technique, if you knew it, okay, and that's what I call it, but if you just knew to do that, or if you use the uh, lowest common denominator, either way, if you got this correct, that's very, very good. But if you are struggling with this, do not give up the ship. There is hope, okay? What you have to figure out is what you know and don't know. So if you're like, let's say in pre-algebra, algebra one, and you don't even remember how to work with fractions, well, that's your starting point. Okay, you have to go back and brush off the cobwebs. So there's plenty of help available to you. So remember, uh, you can be successful in math, but you gotta have the desire to do so. You need the encouragement. My job, my passion is to try to give you that encouragement. And most importantly, I'm trying to give you excellent, clear instruction. You know, I kind of go nice and slow, because, you know, uh, most of you will get confused if I do this real quick. Da, 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 here's the answer. That's how people get, you know, frustrated with mathematics, okay? I could just do tens of problems all day long. Hey, look at me. I know how to do math. Well, 
if you're confused, it doesn't make a difference how many proms you watch someone do. You're going to re, uh, remain to be confused. What you need to understand in a nice, slow, logical way is step by step by step. Go nice and slow on one problem, and as you continue to uh, practice mathematics, your your kind of natural pace and your efficiency will pick up. Okay, but you want to start with being effective. You have to be effective first before you can be, uh, become efficient. And the only way you're going to get, um, you know, doing these problems quicker is through practice. Okay. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.